Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So another video here on thermochemistry part two. So let's do another one here. Bam! So today we are calculating the entropy change of the universe calculation. So this should be a good one here. So we're going to calculate the entropy change of the universe for the reaction. That is the combustion of hydrogen given partial data table of thermodynamic values at 298.15 Kelvin. That is 25 degrees Celsius. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to find out what that combustion of hydrogen reaction is. So you're going to write out the formula for hydrogen. That's a diatomic element. Absolutely, that's H2, that's in the gaseous state, plus what other molecular element, and that would be, since it's a combustion reaction, you need to add oxygen. That is O2, that's also a diatomic. Remember the diatomics, there are uh, seven of them. That's why that L is on your forehead, flip it down, you got seven, there are seven diatomics. Hydrogen and oxygen happen to be two of them. So, with a combustion reaction, this is actually a combination reaction, okay, for producing water, just like the space shuttle uses. So, here is the balanced equation here, right here. <coughs> that is two moles of hydrogen, gaseous state, plus one mole of oxygen, gaseous state, produces two moles of water that's liquid, okay? All right, so here is our partial data table here. So I've got um, species of oxygen, water, hydrogen. The water is in the liquid state, the oxygen is in the gaseous state, and the hydrogen is in the gaseous state. So I've got two elements in their standard states and then a compound. On the vertical columns there, I've got um, enthalpy changes of kilojoules per mole and S0 values of joules per Kelvin moles. Notice that the enthalpy and the entropy have different sets of units that we need to take um, care of at this particular problem. I'm going to point out two more things here. Notice that I have two elements in their standard state and the enthalpy changes are zero for these. That's why it's even not noted in the data table or it's a zero value or it's not even in the data table whatsoever. Okay. So it depends on your data table how that is organized. So the question is, what equation am I going to be using for the entropy for the universe calculation? So the entropy for the universe calculation is the sum of two entropy values. And that is this one. So delta S naught for the universe is equal to delta S naught for the system plus delta S naught for the surroundings. We've been doing delta S naught for the system a couple of times already in two previous videos. We haven't done the delta S naught for the surroundings. So we're going to do both of these calculations here. So the delta S system should be a good review for you. And the delta S naught for the surroundings is a new one. And we're going to sum those two numbers up, um, making sure that the units are the same so that we can sum them up. That's a key thing. So. Um, to get the delta S naught for the system, which we have done on previous videos, not for this particular re reaction, but other ones, is delta S naught for the system is equal to the sum of the S naught values of the products minus the sum of the S naught values for the reactants. So let's plug that in here in just a sec. And the delta S naught for the surroundings is a different equation. The delta S naught for the surroundings is equal to the heat, that is the Q for the surroundings, divided by the temperature which is equal to negative delta H uh, naught for the system over the temperature in Kelvin. This is the reason why we have the delta H naught or the enthalpy change values for this in our data table as well. So we're just going to do the products minus reactants and then what we're going to do uh, from there is divide by the temperature to get our delta S naught for the surroundings. So let's do the first one first, and that is delta S naught for the system. I've plugged this in here. I got moles of water, okay, which is my product and my units minus the moles of hydrogen times my number plus the moles of oxygen times that number. And again, for the S naught values, you have a value for every single compound or element. There are no zero values for the entropy values. So I plug in these values. So I got delta S naught for the system is equal to two moles of water liquid times 69.95 joules per Kelvin mole. 
minus the quantity of 2 moles of hydrogen times 130.7 joules per Kelvin mole plus 1 mole of oxygen times 205.07 joules per Kelvin mole and then close parentheses. So I'm going to do my multiplication, then my addition. I'm going to take care of my uh, significant figures that I have with addition problems, and I am going to get this value. Notice that with significant figures with addition, you're using the fewest number of decimal places. And the fewest number of decimal places is held within the hydrogen, which is the 130.7. It has one decimal place, whereas that for the water um, and that for the oxygen has two decimal places. So I'm using the fewest number of decimal places. So the delta S naught for the system is negative 326.6 joules per Kelvin. So hold on to this number because we're going to be taking uh, uh, advantage of this number and using this number um, later on. Okay, this is the delta S naught for the system. So I'm going to be plugging into that above equation of delta S naught for the universe is the sum of the system plus the surroundings. This value goes in for the system. Now I need to figure out what the value is for the surroundings. So that is going to follow on this next slide here. So hopefully you got the system value right there. You got that data table. We're going to use that again. So our data table is still there. Our balanced equation is there as well. And we're going to get the delta S naught for the surroundings. Again, that is equal to the heat, that is Q for the surroundings divided by the temperature. What is that equal to? That is equal to the negative of the delta H naught for the system divided by the temperature in Kelvin. So I'm looking at my data table for the delta H naught or the enthalpy values here. Okay, and it's products minus reactants. So delta S naught for the system is equal to the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. Okay, this is going to go in my numerator term, and then I'm going to divide by my temperature. Okay, and so this is going to go right over here. Delta S naught for the system is equal to 2 moles of water, that's the product, minus uh, times the negative 285.83 kilojoules per mole, minus 2 moles of hydrogen times 0, because it's an element in its standard state, plus 1 mole of molecular oxygen times 0, because it's an element in its standard state. So that makes this delta S, sorry, delta H naught system very easy to calculate. The enthalpy change for the system, and that is this value here. The delta H naught for the system is negative 571.66 kilojoules. This number, since it's negative, lets you know that it's an exothermic reaction because it's a delta H naught system value. That means it's a change in the enthalpy of the system negative this would be on the product side. As this is a combustion reaction, this produces how much heat? Negative 571.66 kilojoules or that much heat. Okay, hopefully that value holds um, uh, well with you and that number makes sense as well as the sign makes sense for you. Okay, now what we're going to do is calculate the de delta S naught for the surroundings using this value for the delta H naught and dividing by the temperature. Now, you should see that these, this data table is at 25 degrees Celsius or 298.15 Kelvin. So, I'm going to take the delta S naught for the surroundings is equal to negative of delta H divided by the temperature. And so that's negative times negative 571.66 kilojoules divided by the 298.15 Kelvin. That value must be in Kelvin, otherwise our units will not cancel out a little bit in a little bit. And we need to do one more thing here. We're going to convert our kilojoules into joules so that when we sum up the system and the surroundings, we have the same set of units. That's really crucial. This is one step that many students miss right here, and they just add up the values and they get a number that's way far off. Okay, so this is going to equal delta S naught for the surroundings as 1,917.4 joules per Kelvin. Okay, now I'm going to plug in my two values here to get the delta S naught for the universe, that's delta S naught for the system plus delta S naught for the surroundings. I previously calculated on the prior slide the delta S naught for the system. I just calculated the surrounding value. So I'm going to plug both of those in. Remember from the previous slide? Okay, well that is coming from the previous slide and that is this negative 326.6 joules per Kelvin. And again, the reason why I changed 
my delta S naught for the surroundings into joules per Kelvin is so that I can sum up the system and the surroundings. They need to have the same set of units. Okay, and now I'm going to add the surrounding value. Okay, they have the same set of units. One's negative, don't forget about that negative sign. One's positive, don't forget about that positive sign. And here's the value I get. That is the delta S naught for the universe is 1,590.8 joules per Kelvin. That sign should tell you something. And that sign, being that it's positive, indicates that the entropy of the universe is increasing. And this is a product favored reaction, which of course is spontaneous. It's a combustion of hydrogen. This should be a product favored reaction. It has a negative enthalpy, meaning that it's exothermic. This is why we use this reaction to propel the space shuttle off into space. Okay, watch this video here. Bam! That's exactly what's happening. That balloon was filled up with hydrogen gas. There's molecular oxygen surrounding it. You bring a lit match to it, and then it's going to explode and produce water. Perfectly cool. That's so super awesome. Now you know how to change. Now you know how to calculate the change in entropy for the universe by summing up the system and the surroundings, doing those two calculations individually and summing them up. It's an awesome calculation. It's super important for chemistry, especially in thermochemistry. Okay, I'm hoping that you enjoyed that video. You're gonna give me a thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would greatly appreciate that. I gotta always end with a hat. This is a great hat, okay? Um, anybody recognize this hat? Dr. Seuss, hopefully. Dr. Seuss. And again, um, find me on the web. Find my website. Um, donate to my website. I'll give you a sticker. Donate more to my website. I'll give you a t-shirt. Okay? My web address is right there. Bam. Have a fantastic day. And I'm going to see you next time for more crazy hat videos. Bye for now.